This video provides an overview of an analysis conducted by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, to provide insight into the dynamics of a fire that resulted in the injury of seven Prince George's County firefighters. On February 24, 2012, a wind-driven fire in a condemned single-family residential structure resulted in the serious injury of an officer and forcible entry firefighter from Truck 809 of the Prince George's County Fire Emergency Medical Services Department. NIST examined the fire dynamics of this incident at the request of the department. At 9-11 in the evening, a call was dispatched for a residential structure fire in Riverdale Heights, Maryland. Truck 809 was the first due truck and arrived on scene within three minutes of the dispatch. The 809 officer observed smoke moving extremely fast through the front yard and across the street. The Truck 809 officer and forcible entry firefighter proceeded directly from the truck to the front door of the structure. Less than one minute after the arrival of Truck 809, officer and forcible entry firefighter, both in full PPE and SCBA, have entered the structure and began their primary search of the first floor. Smoke and heat conditions on the first floor worsened and the front door slammed shut, trapping the two members of Truck 809. Within 30 seconds of the door closing, the Truck 809 officer cleared a portion of the living room window on the front of the structure and exited to the outside. Truck 809 forcible entry was unable to self-evacuate and continued to endure the elevated thermal conditions in the living room. Although Truck 809 officer had sustained injuries and damage to his SCBA, he alerted other firefighters that his crew member was still inside. Fire attack had started from the basement door on the rear of the structure. The front door was reopened and a group of firefighters, including the Truck 809 officer, entered the living room found the downed firefighter, and pulled him outside through the front door. In uh, February of 2012, I uh, had a fire on 57th Avenue in the Riverdale Heights community. It's a single-family house, uh, just like any other small single-family home in the county. Uh, first arriving units reported smoke and fire shown from a basement level. It's about 9 p.m. It was a red flag day, uh, meaning the uh, weather service had uh, instituted a red flag warning for high winds and, and dry conditions. Uh, the uh, truck and the engine arrived together. Uh, truck crew of two for the inside crew went ahead uh, of the uh, engine line. They were going to initiate a search, what appeared to be an occupied home. Uh, they made it in a front door that had a swing opposite what you would consider. So instead of swinging to a wall, it, it, uh, the swing was into the middle of a room. Fire was in a basement below them. Uh, when they entered, uh, the hose line had not made it in the door and the energy from the flow path that was now created coming up from the basement steps and now out the front door that they had just opened, that energy slammed that front door shut behind them. Uh, within a matter of two minutes, those first two firefighters uh, became trapped uh, and one of them incapacitated. Uh, the one uh, smaller of the two was able to uh, bust out uh, one window which was not big enough for him. Of course, that created another flow path. He got to a bigger window, bust that out, created a bigger flow path, but he was able to get out. Uh, he was then able to uh, get the engine crew who was still on the front porch, had not made entry yet. He was able to get them to help him force open the front door and pull the other young man out. Um, that young man was in a burn center for 45 days, nearly lost his life. NIST's Fire Dynamic Simulator, or FDS, was used to provide insight into the dynamics of this structure fire. The results of an FDS simulation are visualized with another NIST program called SmokeView. The inputs and details for the FDS simulations are documented in NIST Technical Note 1870. The fire started in the basement near the windows on the rear of the structure. Based on an assessment of the fuel load in the burned area of the basement, the estimated peak heat release rate of the furnishings and interior finish was approximately 9 megawatts. However, the lack of oxygen limited the fire growth until the front door was opened. As seen in the heat release rate graph, after the door was opened and allowed additional oxygen to enter and mix with hot fuel gases in the basement, the fire heat release rate increased, with some of the burning occurring on the first floor. Comparison of the simulated initial fire conditions in FDS versus the post-fire damage of the exterior of the basement corner 
where the fire started. The wind was blowing from the rear of the house to the front. In the model, a steady wind speed of 20 miles per hour was used. The output from the FDS simulation can be used to provide insight to the flow path within the two-level structure. Fire gases move from regions of higher pressure to regions of lower pressure. Notice on the outside of the structure that the upwind side of the house, or the rear of the house, is under a higher pressure than the downwind side, or the front of the house. The inside of the house has been pressurized by the wind from the openings on the rear side and the pressure from the fire gases. Once the front door is open, the high pressure on the rear of the outside of the house and the inside of the house equalize. One of the hazards to firefighters located in the exhaust portion of the flow path is convective heat transfer from the fire gases. Convective heat transfer depends on the velocity, the amount of turbulence, and the temperature of the fire gases. This video shows the change in gas velocity on the first floor after the front door was opened. Notice the distinct flow of hot gases from the doorway at the top of the basement stairs to the front door. An arrow shows how the hot gases traveling at 10 to 20 miles per hour would have impacted the front door and forced it closed behind the truck 809 crew. This video shows the calculated change in gas temperatures as a result of opening the front door, which increased the flow and mixing of the fire gases within the house. Wind can generate hazardous thermal conditions within a flow path. Stay upwind of the fire or keep the wind at your back. Uncoordinated ventilation or uncontrolled doors can also be the cause of increased thermal hazards within a flow path. When sizing up a structure fire, choose your tactics with potential flow paths in mind. Recall that in a flow path, the hot gases move from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure. Firefighters located in the flow path downstream of the fire can be exposed to lethal levels of heat. Firefighters positioned in the flow path above the fire are in a high hazard and potentially deadly location. It is critical that tactics are chosen so firefighters are not caught in this position. Research has been conducted by NIST and UL with fire departments across the country on exterior fire attack. The studies have shown the importance of scene size up prior to beginning interior fire operations in order to choose tactics that would not only be the most effective, but also increase the safety of the operations. The experiments in single family homes have shown that once the basement fire was located during size up, the most effective fire attack was made from the same level. For more information on this incident, see Prince George's County Fire and EMS Department Safety Investigation Team Report and NIST Technical Note 1870.